Alrighty, Mr. Gatekeeper. Here, right here around northeast end of Georgia. Mr. Grass Barber. Brother. <laughs> man, you are a man of great patience. I tell you what, man, you gotta have a a spiritual gift when it comes to patience. <laughs> I appreciate your patience, brother. I really do, man. I know uh, I've had this for a little while now. And uh, you've hung in there with me. And uh, we're making a lot of changes around here to make things uh, so much smoother. And uh, things are really looking looking up around here when it comes to productivity and how fast we're able to start getting, starting to get things done. But, buddy, I made sure to put my heart in this thing for you, man. Um, I know this thing was not working. You wanted me to go ahead and uh, convert it over to a high drive setting. So I took the driver out for you. This is a Messenger M4V. It was a Motorola 455 driving eight Motorola 455s. <coughs> I took the variable out right there. Put a button right there for you. Okay. This particular model on the back right here, it basically has some uh, extra padding. I don't know if you can see that. Basically, it's a switch that says 4 watts and 10 watts. And basically, all that is is some extra input padding to where the operator can flip it down. And it basically puts some more resistors in line so you can drive a little more into it. Because th these amplifiers are older. And they were particularly designed to uh, be used with older type radios usually that did about 4 watts. That's what these were primarily designed to be used for. But uh, you can tell the builder still understood there were radios that had that done a lot more with the type of input pads. Uh, very creative type of input pads that, um, that he would use in a uh, parallel series type circuit. So this one had that regular padding, but it also had a little extra padding. Um, this is still in class AB mode. I just took the uh, AB circuit for the driver out. You don't want that staying in there and continuing to get hot. Another thing I went ahead and did for you, man, is I cleaned this amplifier up. I'm talking about from the, from the left to right, upside down. As you can see, there is no flux. Anywhere there might be a tad bit on that big ground bar going around the pills that I couldn't get to but But I clean this thing up and down for you man. This thing is spotless spotless Okay Had a couple of things I needed to, re to repair um, <clears throat> One major thing I did have to do is I had to completely retune this whole amp I had to into the in uh, re retune the input and the output as you see, the output here is broke up, okay? One thing I don't agree with the uh, the way the builder did do the tuning, uh, just personal preference, is he always leaves a tuner in on the output. And that, that tuner is usually rated at about 300. <coughs> Sorry about that. The old phone died on me. <laughs> and I apologize for uh, my cat down here. She's going absolutely nuts. I don't know what she wants, but uh, she's going to have to wait. You're going to have to wait. Okay, I understand, but I'm trying to do a video, okay? And don't be running around these connections and cause a fire down here. You done caused some mishap not too long ago to cause some smoke. Just hold on. Sorry about that. I tell you what, man, that cat's like a dang dog. <laughs> she's a partner, but she's a partner in crime because you gotta watch out she'll get all tangled up in this wire down here and get to blowing up stuff like bombs <laughs> anyway like i was saying uh the um that is a cigarette by the way nothing smoking um the uh trimmer the trimmer is left in their factory and usually those trimmers only rated at about 350 rf volts um around there a little bit more but uh i've just found out that a lot of them will just kind of get weak and i found a uh, one that had arced on me in the uh the uh, one i did for a, a buddy of mine mr real deal and it had actually arced and shorted out but uh 
I went ahead and put a bigger capacitor in there for you, uh, DM19. Okay, they pretty much had DM15s in there, and that's broke up in between this, um, you know, real simple uh, output filter here. Really neat. I, I do like the way they do that. I do like the way that, that he does do that. These are great amps for sideband. They really are. So, uh, this thing is uh, ready to go, man. Um, got a little driver in line. Go ahead and get that up on my uh, lap here. The old trusty uh, first amp I ever built here. The old epoxy one pill. <laughs> the reason why it's called the epoxy one pill is because... Uh, when I first finished it was it was held together by 80% epoxy glue and uh, excuse me 90% epoxy glue and about 10% solder so uh, <laughs> and luckily enough a buddy helped me out and took all the glue out there and and uh, it put put solder you know soldered everything properly and it worked and uh, back then I didn't understand you're supposed to heat the object up that you're trying to solder. I was trying to melt solder and let it lay on top of the connection and try to glue. I, I thought I was gluing, gluing it with metal. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to build me something here soon one of these days. Uh, a better looking box to use as a driver. I need a little two pill to be honest with you. Um, this little 100 watt driver here, you know, it's, it's not performing the way it should, but uh, it does give me a hundred watts, so I can use that. All right, um, I'm gonna show show everything to you on the bench radio first. Let you take a look at the input reflect. Um, and by the way, this keyer on the back, the way this keyer is designed, just so you'll know, is the outside. Okay, is grounded to the case. The outside needs to touch the inside, and it keys. So you could take this and plug in a stomp pedal uh, or anything like that, and it's going to connect the two connections together and make it key. Okay, so uh, that's that is an R excuse me, that's an RCA plug connection, just a manual key there. And uh, doing it that way, you know, takes away from having to use a relay. Um, even though a relay can be a little safer, if somebody plugs something up wrong to it. Um, at least you have the relay there that's pretty much going to go out instead of the main relay. But uh, just to let you know, that's just pretty much you could take an RCA cable and put a switch on the end of it, connecting the uh, the uh, both the wires together, and the amp will key. It will be a manual key, okay? And you'll have to unkey it, of course. That's why it's good to use a monetary switch. A, uh, sorry, man. But they ain't hands rich and it usually means some money's on the way they say so ho hopefully it is <laughs> all right let's hurry up and speed through this i got a lot to do man um we're just on the bench radio like i said i want to show you the input reflect and uh the way we're going to do this we're on an unregulated supply over there i haven't got my uh trusty regulated supply hooked up over here yet yeah, got another regulator down there on the floor. I just got done building last night. I got to get up here. But, uh, so what I'm going to be doing is uh, you're going to see I'm going to switch the amp on. We'll key and I'll turn it off. I'm The reason I'm going to be doing that, these resistors on the LEDs are not really at the right value to be uh, letting a float voltage sit on them. They're going to get a little warm. But uh, I'm just going to do that just so you can say, because that supply is not big enough to pull this amp. Okay, so so here we go. I'm just going to turn it on. We're not going to be using the driver yet. I'm just going to kind of let you see uh, what it's doing with just uh, about 4 watts, uh, around 20 peak hitting it. Oh, yeah. Right there, almost at 400 watts. Oh, yeah. Here's your input reflect. Oh, yeah. Really good input reflect. Oh, yeah. It's right there about a half a watt. It's, it's acceptable. Um, plus, this is going into eight transistors. When you hit a driver into it, the uh, input reflect actually is going to come down a bit. 
The yeah. So that's right there about eh, a little bit under a half a watt. And you will notice uh, sometimes on these bigger amps when you have more transistors and line like that, the input reflect will be up a little. And a lot of times when you put that driver on it, it's just something about the resistance of the driver, the input reflect will go down. And uh, I'll give you a quick key just to show you that right now. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, that time I ran out of space. Hell me. But anyway, I think that got on the video. Uh, with the driver turned on, it has uh, virtually no reflect there on the input, so that looks great. All right, let's get on to the actual king of this thing. I'm just going to go ahead and flip over and show you the max on this thing, give you a max output, okay? Um, I'll let you see what it's doing with the bench first, since I do have the bench already hooked up and everything. Okay. All right, here's your RMS. 1,000 watt slug. We're on the medium tap too, by the way. I'm going to flip over to the high here in a second. Uh, yeah. All right, that's 200 watts RMS. Here's your peak. Uh, yeah. All right, right there, about 600 watts. Flip that off real quick. All right. <clears throat> Now what I am going to do is show you a max, um, right right now, if I flipped over to the hot radio right now, you're going to see about 800 watts PEP, okay? And it's going to be up around 280, around 300 watts RMS, okay? I, just trust me on that. <laughs> You'll know it's true once I hook up the hot radio and you see how much it's doing then. Um, okay, we're going to go ahead and hook the hot radio up now. Then what we're going to do then is flip the high tap on the 100 amp supply over here on the high tap. I'm going to give a major shout out to Mr. Real Deal out there, bud. I still love this supply you did for me, man. I really do. It's perfect for Class C, but like in a position like this, I would rather it be regulated so I could just leave this on. But uh, it's all good. It's all good. Mr. Real Deal is going to be doing me a regulated supply here soon. That one back there is Switchers. But I want to regulate a supply with a linear transformer. Step down. So old real deal is going to be hooking Mr. Gatekeeper up with uh, one of them, man. All right. We just flipped over to the high tap. 21 volt float, 100 amp supply. Okay, driver. Turned all the way up. It's going to be dumping about 100 watts into that. Let me show that to you real quick. Let's flip that on the high. Uh, PP, I mean, excuse me, high. PP. Let me grab the right microphone here. Alright. Oh, that's PEP, okay? 100 watts. Average, oh, not much. About 30 watts RMS. Alright. Let's flick over to RMS. Turn it on. Here's your RMS on the high tap. Oh, Alrighty, about 380. Here's your drop. Go oh, 15 2. Go. Oh, that's about 375, 380 RMS. Here's your peak, big brother. PEP. Go. Oh, right there, about 900 watts, brother. She is rocking and rolling. 15.2 volts, safe voltage. 900, uh, a little bit, uh, eh, maybe a hair over 900 watts, about 360 to 380 RMS. I think I say this thing's cooking, man. This thing's working well. I did one of these uh, that actually had the driver built in, had a 454 driver. I did for um, <clears throat> oh, Mr. Real Deal. His name's coming up a lot in this video, but um, it was doing right around this a little bit more. It was uh, cooking about 400 bu a bird. And uh, I can't remember the PEP of it, but uh, that's good, man. 900 watts PEP, 15.2 volts. It's just driving 100 PEP in it. That's good, man. This thing's running like a strong 
uh, like a four pill and that's pretty much almost like they're doing if you look at it these are 60 watt devices you have eight of them so let's just round down to 50 watts each two pills equals one 2879 okay each two pills one 2879 one two three four four 2879s <laughs> but the, but the neat thing about it is there's a couple of pros and cons to having uh, multiple small transistors but uh, there are cons to it and one of the big cons is is is, is, is bigger amp you know it's got to be a little bigger um, but uh, one of the pros is you usually can drive a little bit of smaller power into it and it's going to last it's going to stay pretty cool and all that you know but a lot of people like the audio from the Motorola 455s um, you got a lot of people that's got their preferences you know so so there you go Ooh, yeah, okay I got it off just making sure all right well there you go man get the tin put on this puppy man get it back to you Mr. Grass Barber we got your 667 coming up next, man. Get that thing straightened out for you. And I uh, hope you enjoy this amp, man. I really, really like these amps. I'd like to get me one one of these days. I do have a Messenger 1200. It, I've took all the pills out and used them for repairs and stuff. But <laughs> one of these days, I'm going to put a fresh set in there. All right, man. I got three videos I got to compile together because I had some issues with the with the camera here god bless 73rd so hope you enjoy grass barber again man i appreciate your patience brother you've been a blessing uh, i want to give a shout out to mr black ain't heard from you in a while bud hope everything's going well with you and everybody else out there man that uh that's patient with old gatekeeper because y'all i'm just trying to dig myself through to the next day like i used to say i ain't trying to be the best y'all i'm just trying to hang with the rest in my own unique way, and I'm good and I'm gone. Bye, bye, bye.